She's a philanthropist and a humanitarian. She's also the current holder of the Miss Universe Ghana franchise. Our guest for today is Mrs. Minaya Donko Muntari. She joins us now. Okay, so um, I, I read you wanted to be a lawyer, <laughs> but you changed your mind after you know something happened along the way. Yeah, well, it was actually my father's dream. I'm the baby of seven kids, and you know, I always had my opinion. Like I would you know, have my opinion with every situation. So my father was like, you need to really get into law. You know, um, I'll always win every case, like mm -hmm. when you're bickering with your siblings. Um, but I was always very vo uh, vocal, um, very confident young lady. So dad said, you know what, you need to try that out. And I considered it, you know, after university, um, I was like, maybe I should, but then Miss Universe happened and my entire life changed. Now, I'm sure you listen to a lot of interviews with women and they usually talk about self-confidence, self-value, and self-worth. Do, do, do you see it lacking when we talk about women empowerment today that we don't really teach women to value themselves? I think um, they always say charity begins at home. You know, it's how that individual is being, you know, was raised. I was lucky to have come from a home that is very loving and caring and, you know, a home that enabled me to express myself, you know, but when I talk about confidence, it's not just, you know, yes, you need the foundation, which I had from the beginning, but, you know, you go out there, you know, your parents will do their very best, but when you as an individual young lady going out there, there's a lot of influences, you know, and uh, Miss Universe gives you a structure where it's, you are Miss Universe, you are a queen. So that itself is, you know, it's a big deal. Mm -hmm. And um, I can speak for myself, but I feel that when you or as myself, as a role model to these young women, it's my responsibility to pass on what I have instilled, what has been instilled in me in the past um, and what Miss Universe has done for me, pass it on to these young women, to empower them, to to let them know that whatever they set their minds to, it is possible. Well, mention confidence after winning Miss Universe. Yeah. Now, I, I've always been a very confident young mm -hmm. lady saying that, you know, mm -hmm. because I came from a home. You know, when you come from a home that is loving, mm -hmm. everything seems, you know, uh, possible. Right. And that right. was my case. But then it added on to whatever foundation that I had. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. Now, I want to know, you know, a, a lot of times we have women, well, not women necessarily, girls, mm -hmm. who would view beauty pageants as a means to an end, as a means to portray themselves as, well, I have made it in society. What sort of training goes into place during Miss Universe? Well, it's, it's a series of activities. Well, first of all, it starts with the audition and even um, the auditions that we've had in the past um, we speak to them, we interview them, you know, and when you're going for an interview, you have to look the part, you know. So it's funny enough, the ladies that have not made it after the auditions have always come back to me to um, thank the organization because, you know, we, we speak to them and encourage them in terms of how you look, how you present yourself, how, you know, to feel good as a woman. It's maybe for a short period of time, but they always take something vital with them, even if it's an audition. Because it's, it's um, yeah, grooming these women. So after the audition period, they go through a series of activities where we, we talk about confidence level. Um, I had the opportunities to work with 10 amazing young ladies last year. And um, as a matter of fact, I have employed two of them and their transformation has just been incredible. They, they came in the house as, you know, very shy and, you know, um, almost insecure. But going through um, all these um, training with us, their lives have changed, their lives have evolved, and they feel very, you know, confident and powerful as women, which a lot of women lack. What we find most online bloggers, they would identify you as beautiful, they would identify you as Sule Muntari's wife before your other achievements come. 
do, you, do you, when you see this and do you feel in a way that well i've achieved this and i feel this should have come first no i'm a philanthropist you, you could have mentioned that no. but if the the opening is always it's, beautiful it's, model, it's just you know it's unfortunate because you know when you're labeled in society you have to work 10 times harder you know i have other businesses that i run um, and it's not easy being a mother, a wife, and uh, a career woman. It's very difficult to manage your time. So a lot of you know people looking in from the outside do not know the dynamics of Mine. Um, I work extremely hard. So, but I don't let it get to me. You know when they put other titles, but you know things that I do that is really important. You know. It's okay, it's their uh, view. What I want to do is I, I, I prefer that action speaks louder than words. But I think for the past two years, my work has shown who Mine, who, what Mine truly is. And people are understanding or respecting that woman, who that woman truly is. It's not just the beautiful model, the, the soccer player's wife, category that box that they they tend to put me in married for eight years is it, <laughs> eight years it took, you, yeah you married yes. in 2010 yeah and you did it for like two years before yeah. that so that's like 10 years in all are there any misconceptions that you find that because you're a soccer player's wife people have about you when you people. walk when you walk into a place and like oh that's Sullivan Terry's wife is there a misconception about who a soccer player a soccer player's wife is it's such a cliche because usually a lot of these soccer players end up with models or actresses, mm -hmm. you know, but um, I think in my case, um, yes, I, I had a career before Sule, right? But I'm also bringing something to the table. Um, I happen to be a model, ex-model, but I'm a businesswoman now. And when we sit to chat, we're talking about our businesses. We're building a future together. So yes, I heard you know that cliche that okay, yes, yeah, she's a model, she's beautiful, but it, it doesn't get to me because I know who I am and I know what I bring to the table. Mm. That's the most important thing. You mentioned you sit to chat with Sule about businesses. Yes. Like, so what do you go to him for? For advice? You also give him advice? Like what, no, what's we share ideas like? because he's also you know he's a soccer player and you know the lifespan of a you know their career is very short lived. Mm -hmm. So and he has businesses. So it's not just that glam life that everybody thinks that we live. It's you know now we're we're mature. We're, we're, we're grown together um, and it's about our future. It's about our child. Now we're parents. We have our kids or our, our child looking up to us. Mm. So the dynamics have changed. Do you always say marriage is hard work? Is it harder when you're in the limelight, when you're married to a soccer Extremely. player? Extremely. Extremely. Yeah. So how do you work? How do you work on it? We, we don't listen to people. We don't listen to the media. But it's very difficult. Like, I don't it's coming listen. from all sides. You go online, To be honest, there. I I don't listen. I'm too busy. I don't have a nanny. <laughs> I, I have businesses that I'm running. I don't listen. I don't see it. Mm. I brush it off. Mm. It doesn't affect me. Initially, because I start. need to change diapers, I need to fix my child's <laughs> well, but dinner. Before, 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 I need to before, pick him up from school. Before he came into the picture, was I it, was, was still very busy. I was still, you know what? Maybe in the beginning, when we started dating, mm -hmm. and obviously, you know, when you have your family constantly being questioned, mm -hmm. especially my parents. Mm -hmm. Okay, so your daughter did this, and is this true? You know, they're constantly being questioned, and we come from a society where. Um, it's okay, we, we don't like to be talked about, you know, we're very simple family and, you know, they, they, they were concerned, mm. they were very worried and that affected me because um, uh, you don't want your parents being worried about you. Mm. You, you, you don't want them worried about your relationship, you know, so in the beginning it bothered me a bit but I mean, they, they got used to it and 
it was just one of those things. <laughs> well, it, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm finding it a bit difficult to believe that you don't listen, you brush I it off. I don't. Do, do you recently, see me replying to any um, articles online? <laughs> do you hear me going on TV venting or radio? Mm -hmm. I never do. I'm busy. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure <laughs> a few months back, you, just a few months ago, a weeks or so, Anasa's expose, I'm sure you chanced upon it. You heard about it. Of course, it was all over the it news. It was all over the news. Did you feel, when you realized the rot in the Ghana Football Association, how did you feel? How did I feel? Yes. I can't really comment on that because it's in the past. Mm. I think from my husband's point of view, he has Ghana at heart. Mm. So they would do anything for this country. And he's a very passionate individual. He loves football and he felt that was the only, you know, being part of the team was the only way to give back to a country that he loves. Like he wanted to win a trophy, something, maybe the African Cup. And his goal was actually the World Cup. Mm. That's how far he wanted to take Ghana. But um, it's all in the past. There's nothing we can do about it. It's gone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we can't change it. Mm -hmm. So I can't comment about something that we can't do anything about. Mm -hmm. It's gone. <laughs> well, you, you probably see, you, you see a side of Sully that most people do not mm -hmm. see. Is he different at home than he is when it comes to no, outside? Definitely. How's he like in person? Very quiet. Mm -hmm. Very quiet. I'm the opposite. Mm -hmm. So how does that work? <laughs> He's very quiet. We, we balance. Mm. We balance. And our kid is, um, I mean, he has, he looks exactly like Sule, but his personality is me. Very mm. friendly, um, you know, laid back. Sule is extremely quiet, mm. extremely quiet. He does what he does at home. And he's a great father, I would say. Um, he makes sure his family's happy. Um, hardly talks or argue, you know, as women, we're always bickering. But yeah, he's very, very laid back, mm. very laid back and a great father. Would you sabotage any other beauty project to put Miss Universe? Why will I? Do? I told you I'm busy. Mm. I don't have that time. Mm. Why will I do that? You are in the media, but mm. in general, as mm. a businessman or woman, mm -hmm. If you have extra funds mm -hmm. <laughs> lying around, mm -hmm. wouldn't you invest it into your businesses? I would. I would. Right. So does it make sense? It doesn't. Right. So do you want me to really answer to that? Well, I, I would need an answer from you because it came up. And, you know, a lot of social media followers. You like, want me to answer they that were, question? They, they, they actually said there was no way it was going to be possible. Because the people that were mentioned trying to sabotage the French, the Miss Ghana franchise, they were different calibers altogether, you know. So it makes zero sense. Mm -hmm. Who comes up with these, you know, stories? Who who writes these stories? Well, it wasn't written. It was a quote that someone made, and it was reported. Who did? <laughs> no, really. Who did? Mm. Next question. <laughs> stop. Stop. No, really. Uh, stop. Let's talk about Shay. How's it doing? Shay's doing very well. That's mm. my other baby. Mm. Um, it's a brand that um, celebrates our culture. It's an extension of who I am. It's um, the Shea brand represents Mini Donkor. Um, I'm a very proud Ghanaian woman, so I wanted to share with the rest of the world some of our beauty secrets by mm. using the raw shea butter and other ingredients from, you know, different countries to create something very luxury mm. and new on the market. Mm. It's an all-natural brand, but it's highly, um, it's very luxury, mm. very, very luxury. Mm. So how's it doing? Very well. Mm. It's been sold in Italy, um, online, mm. and one boutique here in Ghana. So how did you do the promotion for it? Promotion? Yeah, um, it's, promotion. It's, 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 well, Shea is a global brand, mm -hmm. so we're not targeting one specific demographic. Okay. It's a very um, global brand, mm. so um, having it being sold online, we're 
on social media. Um, we've been featured in a few magazines internationally, such as Vogue, Glamour, Cosmopolitan. Mm. So, um, so far, so good. Yeah. Now, you have definitely broken the traditional conception about who a woman is, much less a married woman who is yeah. who has settled down with a well-to-do man, Suleiman Tari, for that matter. Now, what would be your advice to women who are coming up, who, are, who still want to chase their career goals, but they still don't want to be left out when it comes to marriage? I think, um, I per you know, I've always wanted to be independent, you mm -hmm. know, and I always advocate women that want to achieve things on, on their own. Um, I'm happily married, I'm a mother, but I'm still able to balance both lives, you know, being that mother, wife, figure, but at the same time a career woman, you mm -hmm. know, it's, it, it gives you a sense of identity. It, it makes you a woman, it, it makes you, I, I feel at this point in time that, I mean, I gave birth, you know, that's, that's incredible, but at, at the same time I'm still able to be that entrepreneur that I've always wanted to be. So for me, I think what I'll say to um, the young ladies that look up to me is you can do it, it's possible. Mm -hmm. It's not easy because anything that is easy is not worth it. Mm -hmm. But you know, women are very powerful. Mm -hmm. We just need to tap into it maybe just 10% mm -hmm. to un understand our power. Mm -hmm. And if we do understand that, we're able to accomplish anything that we put our minds to. Right. Such an interesting interview. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Right. The sound of silence, I can take it.